to other matters. We have our solid waste collection site standard operating procedures. Mr. Owens. Madam Chairman, board members. Our staff has worked on putting it putting the uh, standard operating procedure uh, draft together and we uh, presented that to y'all uh, this week for your review and wanted to go over go, go over some of the details in it if, if I could sure. and then it did then we'll hopefully make a decision on, on if this is satisfactory for the board or not. Uh, the, the first one I'd like to go over the uh, the actual the usage, all right, and that's on uh, page two of the general provision. And the usage, and from talking and gathering information from residents and and um, and different people in the community, and what we looked at the sites, of course, of county residents to put their household trash in, all right. Um, and also we have um, organizations such as hunt clubs and civic organizations and we have a lot of small businesses that would generate household type trash or maybe some kitchen garbage from, from a break room. Right? And so what staff is asking the board to consider is, is to allow residents to, to use the dumpster sites if they currently use the dumpster sites that open. Allow a a civic organization or a club such as a hunt club to use it and they would be issued a special use permit if you, if, the, if need be. All right? And that special use permit would be the size of a business card that would be laminated and the uh, superintendent or myself would be the approving authority of those special use permits and in, in the event of an appeal we're asking that the board be the appeal authority for that. All right? um, we have some. We would have some situations where uh, residents may not have a vehicle, or, or may be elderly, and a relative from out of town or whatever would would come and actually take their trash to the dumpster. And those people could also use a special use permit, all right? And it would be a form field that that ties the the 911 address of the resident, all right, to that particular one, all right? And in the event that Let's say, for instance, uh, someone comes up to provide assistance, then what they, what we would ask is that the, the site attendant take the information down and inform the individual, give them a form, and, and tell them that what they need to do is come to the county office to get a special use permit. All right. And then that way we have a record of the incident. But at the site, we, we don't have any conflict with the residents or, or one of their relatives trying to use it. Not, our uh, staff feel like that would be the smoothest transition as we move from open sites into manned sites, right? And also, um, people qualifying for special uses. There's some people that that may live somewhere else, but they have a second home that's non-rental here, here in the county. Uh, some people use them for hunting cabins or getaways, and they can also also be able to <coughs> apply for a special use permit if it's permitting with the board. Communication section, we feel like that a, a cell phone would be satisfactory to meet meet the requirements, so that in case as a, a situation at the dumpster site, so we would provide a cell phone that would remain on site, and it's used only for county business to keep the cost at very minimum. God have to do break. <laughs> well, Mr. Ferguson, what I did was that I went to each one of the sites that I had in question, and it was Brink, Barley, and Fiddler's Road, and I have a Verizon phone that must have Verizon could connect, okay? If I move 25 feet in either direction, I might be in bad shape, but we're going we're gonna to attempt to try that. And if that doesn't work at those particular sites, then we may have to look at putting a landline in, but that's going to be a lot more costly. Right, I'm sure it is. I, and I hope you can. I keep fussing. Some of these folks put up a tower down in the break area. Really, it's just dead area. Right. And, and acceptable acceptable ways, of course, will be household trash and recyclable materials. That's on uh, page five of the general provision. Um, we take used mobile um, 
clothing and shoes. There'll be a box provided by one of the uh, charity organizations at the site. Right? And, and, and uh, items that are not acceptable at the landfill because of, uh, at the site would still be acceptable like they are now at the county landfill. And residents are welcome to, to take those type of items that are listed there. Um, Monday through Saturday when, when the landfill is in its normal operating hours. Right? Um, and hazardous materials, I put a special note in there, hazardous materials are not accepted at any location. We have a special we have a special uh, program set up uh, with uh, Brittany over at the uh, council over at the uh, extension office uh -huh. and I work with the Department of Consumer Services right. and we have a, a special turning in time for those particular containers where, where they can triple rinse them and then we store them on site and then a recycle actually okay. comes in and gets those. Okay. So they'll still, be able to do, yeah, they'll still be able to do that normal pesticides. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, what, what I'll ask you to defer until I can work out the very particular details on this is the recycle program. I'm currently meeting with some people and trying to trying to pick the best option for the county so that it would be advantageous to us to introduce a recycling program. It won't affect the waste oil uh, collections or the shoes and the boots right now, but, but I'll come back to you hopefully at the next meeting and be able to present the, the recycle program, and I have that nailed down. But, um, but, but as far as the general provisions that were in there, I think the biggest concern we had was is, is the board's wishes as far as who would be able to use them. Right? And then also in there is two schedules. And the schedules have have a Saturday opening. Right? And, then, and then another option that you would have would be for this Sunday opening for half a day. And I would ask that, I would ask that between now and the next meeting, hopefully, right, that the board would, would uh, talk to your constituents and see if they prefer to be closed on Sundays and have four sites open all day on Monday or have those four sites closed on Monday and let them open a half a day on Sunday. And that would give a Sunday opening from 1 to 7 in each voting district so everyone would in, in other words, people that live in your voting district would have an opportunity if they were doing some type of cleanup on the weekend and it, and it played over into Sunday to be able to, to utilize a dumpster. I apologize, that, but that's a good idea. All right. And, and that's something that we don't have to decide tonight, but, but if y'all talk to your constituents and you want to try the Sunday half a day, then uh, we, we can do that and schedule in your, in your uh, SOP. And if you want to start off trying with the clothes on Sundays and, and open all day on Monday. All right. and, and we'll have the flexibility when we go through this first year <laughs> to, to go with the flow, so to speak. All right. I looked at mine, but I didn't bring my package with me. But it's something about that disagree with but I'm I, I like you to say I'm going on with the flow. What now? See how it works. Man. It does work like it is. Fine. If you want some suggestions, we can get back together. If, if you can, Mr. Vaughn, if you want to get with me, all right, and then I can get it and I can send it out to the other members on a Friday memo and we work it out. All right, that you know that's that's fine. I, I, I want to do. But the staff wants to do with board what was best best interest in the citizens and the board board's uh, consideration. The weather has not been very cooperative in the last several months. Home be cooperative this week even though the rain because Thursday through Saturday scheduled yeah. rain again. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are we still shooting for opening when we say it on the first six? We're days? we're trying our best to fence. The fence contract, the electrical went in. The fence contract started right down the street here today, setting the post, and he set the post, and then they'll come back out for cement drive, and then start stringing wire. Uh, once once I get the compound where I can lock them up, then the Baker Waste will deliver the compactors, and I can start staging other equipment. But I, I want to wait until the until I can secure the site. Right. Uh, heat and construction at at, uh, at Accomplished a lot of work on the on the kiosk, finishing those up. And Mr. Bellick and his staff have been doing uh, inspections on them. All right. 
Um, so, so we're looking at that. The two that we've been concerned about the whole time are the two that's located in the low ground, one at Zion School and one at Fiddler's Road. And, and so far, we, we, we haven't done anything since we initially cleared the ground. Um, those sites, those ones that I mentioned, the six sites that I mentioned, um, they, we're going to push as hard as we can to have those open that first week in May, if it's any way possible. If well permits and make it happen. start advertising going forward. Uh, it should go, Ms. Whitfield, it should go on the paper this week, I believe. Yeah, it'll start Sunday, we'll advertise two weeks, and, and then we'll start doing interviews, and then we want to, we want to get those people on board as quick as we can. How about the truck? The truck? I ain't called it the Mac place today. I told them I'd take delivery the first week in April and they they for food stay. So I, <laughs> I didn't want to call it. You tell them it's not ready. <laughs> okay. All right. So the truck trucks it was scheduled for me to pick it up this week. Okay. All right. Do you want the board to approve the standard operating procedures with the exception of the schedule and the recycling program? Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, the problem is I can't last week. Let's go.